The Battle of the Trebia River was the first in a string of three major victories won by Hannibal over the Roman Republic during the Second Punic War. During this war, Hannibal of Carthage audaciously launched a secret invasion of Italy and for three years in a row faced off against everything that Rome could muster, winning every time. I'm not going to explain what the Second Punic War was, because if I started down that road I would never get to the battle. Hannibal was in Italy and the Romans wanted him out of Italy. You can look it up if you want more information than that. So, Battle of the Trebia River was the first major set-piece battle of Hannibal's invasion. There had already been one skirmish between Hannibal's army and a small Roman force commanded by a consul, but the Romans had been forced to retreat. The other consul was on his way, marching up from the south commanding a large army of his own. The two consuls joined forces in December of 218 BCE. They tracked down Hannibal, who was encamped near the Trebia River in northern Italy. They closed in on him, encamping on the opposite side of the river, preparing for battle. Let's look at the strengths of these two armies. They were almost equal in size. The Romans slightly outnumbered the Carthaginians, but not by much. The Carthaginians had 38,000 men. 10,000 of them were high quality cavalry. 20,000 were armored heavy infantry, and 8,000 were light infantry. Allied Gauls made up a third of this number. The Romans had 40,000 men. These broke down into 4,000 cavalry, 16,000 heavy infantry, and 20,000 assorted infantry from their Italian allies. Hannibal spent some time exploring his side of the river. He discovered an old, dried out riverbed that had overgrown with some long grass. He now knew where he wanted to fight. In the middle of the night, he ordered 1,000 infantry and 1,000 cavalry to silently sneak into the grassy riverbed. Early the next morning, Hannibal initiated the battle. He sent all of his remaining cavalry across the river to attack the Romans at dawn. By the way, the river was only like 4 feet deep, just so we're all clear. Nobody was swimming. The Romans frantically ran around trying to get people up and ready to fight, but by the time they threw together a meaningful defense, the Carthaginian cavalry was already back across the river. It was a hit-and-run attack. As the infantry continued to form up, the Romans sent the cavalry in pursuit. As you can see, the Carthaginian cavalry significantly outnumbered their Roman counterparts by over 2 to 1. I can't help but wonder what the Romans thought they were accomplishing when they went after the Carthaginians like this. What were they going to do if they ever caught them? It seems to me like somebody gave an impulsive order in the middle of a surprise attack. Look at them, they're out in the middle of nowhere. But fortunately, Hannibal wasn't that interested in them right now. Carthaginians led them on a wild goose chase and refused to engage. The Roman cavalry eventually gave up exhausted, just as their heavy infantry was beginning to cross the river. Hannibal arranged his men in a single defensive line. He placed his African heavy infantry on his right, his Spanish heavy infantry on his left, and the Gallic allies in the center. The Romans arranged themselves in the standard three-line formation common during the Republic. They placed the Roman heavy infantry in the center with their Italian allies on the left and right. After lots of waiting around and shivering in the cold, the battle begins. 10,000 Carthaginian cavalry immediately charge forward and go after the 4,000 mounted Romans. Some lightly armored Carthaginian infantry followed, and the Romans, exhausted and outnumbered, didn't put up much of a fight. Simultaneously, the veteran Roman heavy infantry from the first two lines advanced to meet the Gauls. They hit them hard, and the Gauls began to slowly lose ground. The Carthaginian cavalry and infantry on the wings had finally chased off the last of the Romans. They suddenly turned and collapsed in on the enemy flanks. The Roman allies on both sides were now fighting in two directions at once. They were starting to get nervous. This was not good. The Roman heavy infantry in the center were oblivious to all of this. They heard the crash of battle all around them, but they thought they were doing great. They were tearing through the Gauls and gaining more and more ground. At this point, as if he planned it or something, the hidden Carthaginian troops crashed out of their grass concealment. 1,000 cavalry and 1,000 infantry charged the Roman rear. Fortunately for the Romans, they still had an uncommitted third line who turned to meet the enemy. This was enough to stop the Carthaginians in their tracks, but as you can see, the Romans were now fighting in all directions at once. But finally, the Romans had a major breakthrough. The heavy infantry in the center, still oblivious to what was going on around them, finally cut through the last of the Gauls. They were now on the other side of the enemy, with no orders. I don't even know how to describe what happens next. 
they made it through the gulls and then they just kept going and going and going. I don't know if this was cowardice or stupidity, but they just kept going forward right off the edge of the map. When they arrived in the nearest town, they started telling people that they won the battle. Maybe those meatheads actually believed it. I don't know. The Roman allies, who were already fighting on two fronts, finally clued into the fact that they were being attacked from the rear as well. This was too much for them. The units started to ignore orders, and everything kind of broke down into a free-for-all. The Carthaginians closed in and easily finished the job. The Roman third line made a heroic last stand, but were eventually overwhelmed. The Romans lost a lot of men. By lot, I mean at least 20,000, probably more like 30,000. It was a disaster. The Carthaginians lost around 5,000 men, and most of them were Gauls. The funny thing is, after such a resounding victory, these losses were easily replaced by new Gauls flocking to Hannibal's banner. What I want you to take away from this battle is how well Hannibal knew his enemy. You know that saying, no plan survives first contact with the enemy? It doesn't really apply here, does it? If you go back and look, Hannibal's plan accurately predicted almost every move that his enemy made. Only two things didn't go exactly according to plan. First, he probably didn't anticipate that the Romans would have a third line available to meet his ambush. But at that point, he had them surrounded anyways. Second, I'm sure that he'd hoped that the Gauls would hold their own against the Romans. But in the end, it worked out because they inexplicably removed themselves from the battlefield. During the next campaigning season, Hannibal would do it all again at the Battle of Lake Trasimene. Stay tuned for that. There are people voting right now to determine the topic for an upcoming video. If you want to be in on the next round of voting, have a look at my Patreon page.